All right, it's time to finish this bad boy off. So, and uh, welcome back to the Let's Play. Uh, Zane's still with us. Yep. It's time to rock the dragon. Dragon, dragon Ball Z. Rock the. <laughs> yeah. So that's this a, dragon that's... boss has, I think, it has a hundred HP. Um, here's the thing: it will always do thirty-seven damage, and it will never miss you. And if I remember correctly, I was wrong. Lin, Lin Solkati does give her bonus damage against dragons. Yeah, but in this not game. much. She's doing eight times two, so sixteen. Eight times two. So, yeah, this this boss is uh, interesting. Uh, this is something I like when uh, when Fire Emblem games do with their bosses. Is that? Oh, you gotta you see this. You gotta see this. Fuck's sake, Hector! Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Fuck's sake, Hector! You had one job, but you were saying? Yep. Um, this is a thing that I I like it when Fire Emblem games do. Is that uh, do with their bosses? Is that they give you a boss where it's only practical to to have a certain number of characters attack attack the boss like uh with with this particular boss it you know you're really only going to be using your three lords athos kanas with luna if you have him mm -hmm. uh and and that's it and may, you know, maybe someone else if they got legendary weapon and really good levels yeah uh, yeah this but is fortify it, it, uh heals everyone in the area athos can insta heal the whole party so definitely have him do that when you're going up against these guys because you want to insta heal everyone. But but the re the reason I like that aspect so much is that um, typically um, typically when Fire Emblem does uh, bosses, they'll they'll usually do bosses in a couple of ways. One is where everybody can attack him, and it's usually there's usually no real cost to them doing so. You know you have stuff like Awakening where all the bosses. Are, p are piss easy because you can just gangbang them yeah. with, uh, with several different units at once. But then you have something like this, or if you do one-on-one -on -one bosses, uh, like with the with the a lot uh, with a couple of the fights of the Black Knight that yeah. that that aren't always so great because the uh, because doing one-on-one -on -one fights is usually not practical. Mm -hmm. So typ typically, like the big problem with uh, with the uh, with Fire Emblem bosses is that they, they're easy because you can just gangbang them. This is a case where you can't really do that, but and it makes the boss more challenging, but it's fair because you still have the ability to go to to have multiple characters fight him at once and use teamwork yeah. in order to do it. And even then, so, you can and you can plan around how, like, because like I said, the boss is always going to hit you, but he's always going to do 37 damage. You're not going to get random crit out of nowhere. Yeah. And stuff exactly. Like that. So, so this 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 is probably like the most technically uh, well thought out boss fight in in the series. Although usually, usually yeah. if you don't kill him in one turn, it's going to be kind of a, a pain. Yeah, I think another good example is Ashnard, where like you only want to fight him with Ike Nasir and the Laguz Kings. Anyone else is a dumb idea. Yeah. Well, no one else can can damage him yeah. besides um, those three characters. Also, another good example is Ashira, where everyone can attack her, but it's meant to be like that. You're meant to get everyone to attack. Yeah, I mean Ashra. Ashra is a case where um, where where y you can have everybody gang up on her, but at the same time, um, because she has the Nihil skill, <laughs> and she y you're not going to. It doesn't make the fight you know piss easy necessarily. Yeah. Unless you're playing it. Also, you have mode. to make sure that her barriers are killed within the turn. Don't let them respawn. Yeah, and you have to finish her off with Ike too. Yeah, but that's the other expected. thing. <laughs> so I want to finish her off with um, Shinon. You're doing it with Ike, but but Shinon, but Ike. <laughs> I mean, it's it's Ike. You know, if you just got to. Kill, you, he has to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I really like. Yeah, and Lucius actually going up against him. It's like the. F I think this is the only time I've let Lucius go against this guy. Well, t you were saying that this is your best, the best Lucius you've trained. So. Yeah, he's, 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 again, he can, he can fight the good fight, and, and he's got the same HP as Athos. He might as well just be young Athos. Oh, that that's an interesting thing. A really, really young Athos. Uh, maybe maybe when they remake uh, B uh, Binding Blade, they put uh, Lucius in as and he's slightly as, older. <laughs> yeah, he make Lucius the Goto of uh, of. Uh, Binding of uh, Binding Blade. Binding yeah, Lucius Blade and remake. Raven. The, they could be a couple. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's an interesting idea. Hey, man, they're they're, pra I, they're practically gay together. Uh, well, I, I, I basically, if they were gay, I would not be the least bit surprised. Oh uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of like uh, it, it's kind of like Ike and Soren. Like, I mean, it's it, it's weird for me to think about them as being a couple, but 
but it does make sense. You know? Yeah, well, Ike, I think, uh, one thing I like about Ike, the way he's written, he could go with anyone and I would buy it. If someone said Ranulf or Alincia, I'd be like, yeah, I can get that. Yep. I mean, I I definitely think that Alincia works better with, uh, with Joffrey. Uh, Joffrey. Yeah, I, I to I'm 100% Alincia and Joffrey. All right, Lin, let's finish him off. <laughs> Lin, Lin gets the, the honor of finishing the job here. Well, I, Lin was pretty much the go-to unit for this game. She was wrecking the most shit, so might as well finish off the dragon. <laughs> yep. I remember that in my playthrough, uh, she she was not able to even damage the damn thing, even with Solkati, because of how bad her strength was. Yeah, that that doesn't surprise me. I also got to say, I am not a hundred percent on the on how the the dragon sprite looks. It looks fine, it, it, but then it moves its head in like up or down, uh, up, and it looks weird. It just looks it. Yeah, I, I think that's the best way to put it. Is that I think it. I think it like the sprite is well animated, and you know, and technically, I I mean, it looks. It's just that I'm not a hundred percent sure on how the thing looks. I think it it's looks, the anatomy. It's yeah. It's like the squashed head. Or whatever makes it look weird. Very weird. And it's like when it moves its neck and it's got that like round bit. It's like no, nah, that doesn't look right. Yeah. But you yeah. only you only see it rarely. Most of the time you're just staring at its face. <laughs> and fucking yep. hell, that dragon. So that was the end of Blazing Sword. One of my favorite end games. I will say. I really do like yeah. the end of this game. Yeah. The 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 way the the final chapters in this game are set up are actually pretty great. I have yeah. to I have to admit that. As, and that that final boss is 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 pretty neat. Yeah, because most um, Fire Emblems, they have epic build-ups to end games, then you fight the boss, it's like, oh, that was it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, how, what, that's what happened with Binding Blade, I mean. Yeah, it's like, oh, all these dragons, oh, oh they're dead. Yeah. It's like, here, here's the Dusk Dragon, it's like the, it's like an evil god dragon, oh, it's dead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that that was easy. Yeah. I think, like, um, that was the same with the original, like, Shadow Dragon, Marth just kills it so easily, Sacred Stones, like, Demon King, yay, dead. Yeah, the Demon King is not challenging at all in Sacred Stones. Despite having the most terrifying sprite in GBA. He he has one of the best the best sprites. It's it's like what would happen if the dragon sprite from this game, I think, would was fully executed. Yeah. Because he because he looks cool, the sprite is 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 well animated. Yeah, and he fucking and, punches you. Yeah. He he like he like like fucking grabs you and crushes you for one of his attacks. It, it it's just awesome. But he just goes down so easily. Well, that's because that's because you have Mer, uh, Ephraim. Mer e Ephraim, and and Erica yeah. all attacking him at the same time for super effective damage. It's just like yeah, yeah. No. Just, he, and he's not even that huge a threat. Just like especially, I remember you can like I've one rounded him before. It's like uh, first turn, like sorry, not one round. Just like um, all right, um, it's, it's my turn. Go. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, you can kill him off in one turn if you attack him with those three. It's yeah. it's kind of embarrassing. It is, which is a shame because you know Demon King. And poor Athos is dying. Yep, Athos is dying. Which, I mean, he's lived a good, fulfilling life. I'd yeah. say. He's he's like what? what a thousand years old in the game's canon. Hmm. Yeah, like around that age. It's like it's like saying goodbye to Yoda. Yep. I can't remember. I think I missed it, but he foreshadows Binding Blade. Uh, there's a lot of foreshadowing to Binding Blade in this end game. Yeah, because he talks uh, about a dark star rising and burn. It's like, what could it possibly? Oh wait. <laughs> Yeah. And Hector gets like a cold chill down the back of his spine. Something tells me I'm in trouble. Yep, that's what happens when you when you wield the armads. You're you're fated to die in battle. But that's I mean Hector wouldn't have it any other way. I don't think. Yeah, well Hector's that type of person. Though it still baffles me that he was taken down by the Wyvern generals. Yeah. Like really, you lost a fucking Narsian. I mean, I well. To be fair, maybe as he got older, he got weaker. I mean that uh, that happens. I mean Hector. Also, he if, you got, smarter. if you got ganged up at, by all of them at once, then. Well, if if that's what happened, then yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So we've got, uh, and you've maxed out your support with Ninian, right? Yeah, you max out the support with Ninian. She stays behind and becomes the mother of Roy. I think in terms of canon, they are meant to be um together. Which makes sense because they are a pretty a pretty nice couple. Like they're, they're one of my favorite ships in Fire Emblem. Though uh, Elibut's also like his other wives are either Fiora or Lin. Which to be fair, I've done Lin quite a few times. I actually really like Lin and Elibut's relationship. It's not my favorite, but I like it. I mean, I just think it'd be cooler for Roy to be uh be part dragon 
Cause, cause even the, cause it would, it would, it would explain why he's uh, overpowered in other games beyond, beyond uh, the game where he well, stars. It's in. not that he's overpowered; it's his weapon is. Yeah. Again, he's not good. The Binding Blade is good. <laughs> yeah, unless you're playing Smash Bros. Again, it's still the, it's just the Binding Blade. <laughs> even well, then, I don't. Not, I don't he uses the. He technically uses Durandal in in uh, one of his heroes incarnations. Yeah, and, Brave Roy. Yeah, Brave Roy, and that and to be fair, he's he's arguably better when he's using Blazing Durandal. Yeah, he is because he's a brave hero, so that makes sense. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, but um, yeah, but it's like um, even though Roy might be good in Smash, I don't think he's ever been better than Marth. Uh, in terms yeah. of tier list, I don't think he's ever once been better than Marth. But Marth is like constantly high tier. Yeah. I mean that's that's because Marth has his weird tipper mechanic where he can he's better at launching people. Depending that, and on I think just Marth has the, one of the overall best move sets in Smash. It's just so good. Marth is just faster than a lot of other characters in general. Yeah, and he's got good covering. A lot of his attacks also like cover a lot of his body. Well, the thing is, is that in melee he has probably some of the best like fighting range of, mm -hmm. of all the characters. Like, uh, outside of projectiles, he has probably the best range. Yeah, his sword, his sword is, like, longer than Link's and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, like, just Smash with Wii U, I don't know, like, his arcs, they're just so well-defined. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, uh, Lucina is also really good, too, from what I've heard. Yeah, well, she's, 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 she's Moth, not as good because she doesn't have tipping, but you don't have to worry about if they get too close, you do, like, piss for damage. Yeah, exactly. She's 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 arguably more consistent than Marth, and and some character and some people prefer playing as her. I'm, I'm definitely one of, one of them. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely one of them. I, Marth, I'm good with Lucina. I just go to town on people because I don't have to worry and, and like really have to worry about positioning. I can just go in and go nuts. And Ro well, Roy did get better in Smash thing because he was more um, unique now, and he hits really fucking hard. But god damn, his recovery lag between moves. And his recovery yep. shows shit. Yeah, that's the thing about Roy. I mean that. I mean Roy's Roy was always a character who I preferred playing back in the day with melee. Mm -hmm. But the, but the thing is, is that I was so shit at the game that I would literally just spam his exploding sword special. Yeah, like I, that's what I most charge... people did. Again, if yeah. you charge it fully, insta kill. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But it was so satisfying to land, you know. It it, it really was. Even though it, it was me. at no way practical. Yeah, and I swear to God, Marth's shield breaker, I didn't even know it was a shield breaker, I just liked it because it was a strong move. <laughs> I didn't realize for the longest time, oh wait, it instantly destroys shields? Shit! So yeah, um, Nils is gonna go off by himself, and Ninian's just gonna stay here and be, well, be a mum. Even though Ninian will not last long, they, they make that way, like, Ninian's not gonna last long, shield has a few years at best. But, you know, a few years spent with Elliwood, good times, good times. Ah, uh, always technical fuck-ups on something. Yep. Sorry about the jump cut there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my microphone decided to disconnect, and uh, my Audacity recording got paused as a result, so... Yeah. We still have the file, so it's fine. I mean, you're listening to it, so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, we, um... we just had to... We just had to... We just had to do a little bit of, uh... Of, uh, thingy-majigs to... To make to make sure that this does not completely crash and burn because that Indeed. would be a disaster. Would it be hilarious if as they were talking another dragon just popped through the gate like did I miss something? Yeah. <laughs> that would be that would be unpleasant because now it's Athos like is it's like Athos is dead and uh and uh and we we don't have him along for the ride so we can't use fortify so we're we're fucked. <laughs> yep. And yeah, Nils goes back by himself unless Ninian is, um, isn't a support. But she is, so she ain't going. She's um, she's staying right here, she's even though she right doesn't here. live long. Yeah, but it's a she she she'll probably enjoy her time with Elliewood. I mean, they they have a kid together, so you know, bound chick a wow wow. What if she does, and then like two days later, she's like, oh, I regret this so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my god, why did I do this? Uh. That's not how Ninian and Ellie would work. They yeah, are, they're they a sweet little like that. couple. Alright, so N <sighs> Nils is gone. Uh, goodbye, Nils. I remember you seeing... You were pretty cool whenever we used you, even though we used Ninian throughout most of this. I remember seeing a, an interesting hack ah, where... Uh, the sun breaks through. <laughs> the, the, the end of the game is near. Well, it's pretty much here now. 
Yeah, the sunlight's coming up. Could, could have used that a little earlier to prevent this this place from being uh, a fog of war map. Man, this journey's been so much fun. So, again, sorry that it took so long. It's just stuff was happening, but finally reaching the end of this, man. And the fact that I'm going to go back and play it again soon is going to be awesome. I, I'm going to love that image. Oh, <laughs> that's... <laughs> yeah. Those two are so cute. Oh, I'm going to put my dick in this. <laughs> I'm going to put my dick in a dragon. Pretty much what happens is, you know... One year later, Elwood's about to become Thingamajig, and they announce that, you know, um, Ninia's pregnant, would you name our son? <laughs> oh, Wouldn't it be some shit if you're like, um, you could, you could, you could choose what name he would have. They just called him, like, dumb fuck. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Uh, that would, that would be pretty bad. Sorry about uh, the jump cut again! <laughs> Discord was being stupid! Yeah, My god! It, the first part we had no problems. And what's stupid is that we're back at is that I'm back at uh, my house for Thanksgiving break, so we're in stable Wi-Fi. So why? Yeah, I don't know I, why. I've, I've got my own internet set up, and no one else is using it. Yeah, no, it's it's just being it's just being weird and dumb. Is Discord cursed? Oh, I can't imagine how bad Skype would be. Oh god, Skype. Well, Skype would have uh, Skype would have us dropping the call every like two minutes or something stupid like that. Yeah, yeah. ain't nobody got time for that shit. No, indeed. Yeah. Adelwood's looking pretty dapper. Ellerwood's looking dapper because he's about to come to Marcus. Yeah. He's also about, and then when he gets older, he just becomes ill. But his <laughs> stats become so damn good. It's funny. If you look up his stats in Binding Blade, they're really good. Well, the, I mean, it's it's his trial uh, it's his trial map stats, so it's... Yeah. I mean, it, they don't have to conform to reality because it's not part of the in-game canon. If he, Imagine if he joined the fight. <laughs> Suddenly he feels like, oh, fuck. You know what's interesting what is... You know what's interesting is that uh, Nils going through the Dragon Gate. I, I remember seeing a hack where uh, it it sort of told the the story of how Zephyl uh, got the the ability to summon dragons from the Dragon Gate, mm -hmm. and um, there was an interesting part where um, it w where like the hack had you playing as Zephyl going to the Dragon Temple, and Nils was there uh, fully grown up, and mm -hmm. he was guarding it as an actual ice dragon. Ah, uh, I think I've seen images of that. It's it's a, it's a really interesting looking thing. Yeah. <laughs> and Zephyr's like fuck you. <laughs> yep. Zephyr Zephyr just does not care. He he uses his almighty Eki sax to Sorry, it sounds it sounds like he's saying Eki sax. <laughs> Taste <laughs> well, my <it's>, eggs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 funny cuz like the the I always refer to the sword as the Exaxis. So, uh, -huh. uh but but it's always spelled as uh like Exax. So, as a joke, I always like to call it the Eki sax. <laughs> yeah, takes my egg sax. <laughs> yeah, this is it, the egg sax. It's like a, it's like he's a frog or something like that. Yeah. But anyways, get up, get up. Oh. Midoriya. Yeah, so, uh, my favorite character in academia. Yeah. Uh, what what what's a uh, grape grape guy's name? Um, uh, I, I, um, Minor Minori. N oh God, this is gonna this is gonna drive me nuts. It's, uh, uh, yeah, I know. I know you're talking about though. Yeah, Mineta. Oh that's God! What it is. It's executive Mineta. producer Satoru Iwata. I feel so sad. It's, it's, it's like uh, so. You you just brought up the character and all. I just wanted to say, Mineta, you're not thinking anything perverted, are you? <laughs> I love that bit in the classroom where he's like, before he could even finish his sentence, just slaps him with a tongue. Yeah, because <laughs> he because he thought that that what was wrong with Uraraka was uh, was PMS. <laughs> yeah, it's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> PMS, shut the fuck up. Fuck up. <laughs> uh, I mean, Mineta is Mineta gets a lot character. of hate. Mineta gets a lot of hate, but he's 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 a funny character. I think he's I think the, he's funny. I think he, get, he well, he's the joke character, but I think he gets hate because everyone there is so well for the most part so likable and honorable, and he's just a little pervy kid. Yeah, but even then, like he he's framed in a way where you know it, it is so pathetic that it's kind of yeah, hard he, to. He, to he's fully... kind of a loser. He's a bit yeah. of a loser. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that <laughs> was Fire Emblem Blazing Sword. Uh, Zane, why don't you go final thoughts? Uh, final thoughts, uh, it's by no means my favorite Fire Emblem game, but there is a lot to like here. I think that it's... I think I think the best way to put it is that it is... It's... On a technical level, it's probably the most solid and everything's working together well enough Fire Emblem game. There's nothing, like, majorly wrong with it. Like, even the worst... The quote-unquote 
worst map in this, um, the, the traditional hated map, uh, Battle Before Dawn, I would argue is on the lower end of, like, bad, quote-unquote, bad Fire Emblem maps. Yeah, that's, uh, you think that was bad? Go play Echoes. Yeah, <laughs> go play Echoes. Go, go play some of, uh, the later parts of, uh, Fire Emblem Faith's maps. Yeah, or go play Binding Blade. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that also. So I'd, it'd be interesting to see, uh, uh, an updated, uh, worst Fire Emblem chapters list from you. Yeah, uh, probably. Well, again, I'm gonna do the remakes at some point, so I'll probably update some stuff in there. But I got to play more because apparently Freys is just filled to the brim of them. Yeah. Well, you've got. Yeah. I mean, Fire Emblem Five. That's a, that's a game that I'm very uh, iffy on whether or not I actually want to play it. I'm gonna give it a go. Just don't know whether or not I'm actually gonna enjoy. I reckon I'll enjoy, but it, I'll have to wait and see. I'll have to wait and see. Yeah. And it could here. be one of those things where, the, despite being such a mishmash, I love it, or I just can't stand how ridiculously silly it is yeah. it's and i honestly i've been kind of not interested in playing fire emblem for a while now i i just can't seem to get myself to play a game i think you're just a bit exhausted it might it might just be uh, series fatigue and and to be fair the last game i played the last main series game i played was echoes which did let it left a bad taste in your mouth yeah i mean parts of it did like echoes i mean my big thing with Echoes is that I don't like how it's getting put on a pedestal just because it's not another Awakening Club. Because, like, to be fair, that is that is the best thing about Echoes is that it's not trying to be an Awakening or Fates clone. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I just wish that it had better designed levels and that it didn't drag in its third quarter, in, in the third part of the game yeah. as, as much as it did. So Very true. I do feel it gets a bit too much trace burst because it's not Fates. And I think, well, I was just this person who just, like, looked at it for what it was. It does a lot of things right, but it does a lot of things wrong. Yeah, exactly. That that really is the best way to put it. I get why people like it, especially if you didn't like Fates, but I think the game has to be judged on its own merits rather than just constantly compared to everything, uh, to the previous games. I th I, I'm of the opinion that you should really only compare things when the comparison is warranted. Like, a, uh, like if there's a piece of media that's trying to do something... And and it it doesn't work, but there's another piece of media that succeeds at doing it. Then the comparison is warranted. Comparing, yeah. but but like trying to compare things, oftentimes it's just a case of apples and oranges. Like to be to be fair, Echoes is uh, is very much trying to do its own thing. It has a lot of very unique mechanics, mm -hmm. and that and that's stuff I really like about it. But a lot of its mechanics just would not translate well into other games in the series. You know. Yeah, I can't imagine the way Arch is working working well in other games. Yeah, exactly. Or just how there's no weapon triangle. Yeah. So, I mean, if no weapon triangle doesn't work in uh, the DS Shadow Dragon, so... Mm. Anyways. So, as for me, I've made it clear that this is my favorite Fire Emblem game, and even upon replaying it, it still is. I have noticed some problems with it upon seeing this. Like, I think it's a bit, a little, a little too... Some bits are a bit too easy... Still not the easiest Fire Emblem game, like not Awakening or Sacred Stones or Birthright, but some bits are kind of a cakewalk. A lot of the chapters, while they are good in design, they don't have enough enemies, so they're over way too quickly, or some feel a bit empty. Um, but aside from that, I just love how everything just feels so tight and comes together. I think this is one the one Fire Emblem game where unit balancing started to get pretty good. Not perfect, but it started to get there. I think the story, while pretty simple, just flows nicely. I love the time it takes to really um, get more characters involved, have subplots, and, you know, just have quiet moments. The cast I really enjoy. I find them all very likable and enjoyable. I think the game is, like, this, um, the addition of, like, optional side chapters is really good for those who want more. I just really love Blazing Sword from start to finish. It's just a great time for me. So, yeah, that's, that's the game, pretty much. And, um... Are you going to do Sacred Stones as a Let's Play, or are you just going to do it as a as a streaming thing? No, no, I am doing Let's Plays. Okay, you are going to do a Let's Play of it, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. the live stream Sacred Stones was just kind of to test live streams out, and it seemed to work. I think I'll go back to it, just because people really liked it, and I want to do an... I'm going to do a Warriors from where I do Lin's map, because I purposely held that off just for a live stream. Yeah. I do so recommend... I've done Celica's one before Lin's one. You're gonna you're gonna want to do uh, Lin's map because Lin herself in uh, Warriors is actually is actually a lot of fun to play as and and yeah, she's I, I heard she's one of the like I keep hearing some certain units like uh, people like I heard from you Tiki is the best I was like, I think nah she isn't use awakening mode okay yeah she is <laughs> yeah Lin and Tiki are are probably my favorite characters in that game 
because yeah, well, uh, currently my favorites are like um, Sakura. Surprisingly, I actually really like Sakura. Lissa because that fucking flip attack, I love it so much. Yeah, this this is pretty great. Um, yeah, personal favorite she... characters. Uh, personal favorite warriors characters for me. Uh, Tiki's my favorite, followed by Lin. Mm-hmm. Uh, followed by Camilla, Rioma, and uh, what's another good one? Uh, Xander. Xander, yeah, really uh, like Xander's Xander. one of my faves. Moth as well, and I, um, she does my favorite Pegasus Knight. Um, All the Lissa, Pegasus Knights play the same. Yeah, but she and I just like the most formal for her character. She was, she just felt so uplifting and like just lovely throughout. I don't know yeah. what it is about Sheeta. Yep. Um, Leo, I actually quite like because I thought he was a pretty cool magic user. Yeah, well, and I... and Camilla's my favorite. I just I think Camilla's moveset is just fantastic. Yeah, Camilla's moveset's a lot of fun because she yeah. she has great crowd control. But, yeah, uh, she has uh, mounted utility and flying. <laughs> yep, exactly. I also absolutely love her Malik Master design. I just love how she is <laughs> in um, Thingy Majig. And you know what I really like is is uh, whenever you clear a map with her. The yeah, she's stupid... like, sorry, darling, my eyes are up here. Oh, uh, that that's one of those things where like it's a bad joke, but it 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 rubs me in a good way. It rubs it me in rub- a good way because everyone, most people, are just like Ugh, for the fans of it. It's like, yeah, but you know, you like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I look forward to playing this because before Sacred Stones, we move, we do the, he- we're going to do the Hector Hard Mode run and get pretty much anyone who wants to be on involved. So that's going to be fun. We're using a completely different team. So if there were units that were left out this time, they're going to come back. They're going to be featured, hopefully. Probably uh, Oswin will get a little bit more love because I know he wasn't in the in the end game, but you did clearly yeah, well, use him. Yeah, um, I did use him quite a bit. Oswin probably will. Pet and Louise will. I reckon Hawkeye will. Um, I'm gonna have to use Barta so I can get Carla. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, those type of people. Though I am um, based on how things are going, I think Lin's still gonna be one of the front runners. But we'll have yeah. to wait and see. Yep. Yeah, and and once again, this Let's Play Final Games just makes me laugh at how often bad units always perform well for me. I don't <laughs> intend for it to happen; it just does. Because yeah. that's, uh, I mean, it's it's the blazing luck. You know, I can't wait before. till we get to Path of Radiance and Sophie just fucks everyone up. Uh, <laughs> that'd be that'd be a thing. Yeah, or like we get to Radiant Dawn and Fiona somehow just wrecks everyone. Fiona kills the Gitsia. I would like. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. What is life? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's well, that's a case of like Radiant Dawn does not have leeway for bad units to use. So you, unit ba- <laughs> Radiant Dawn has terrible unit balancing. That is a thing, unfortunately. I mean, Path of yeah, Radiance we... has Path of Radiance has some iffy unit balancing, but Radiant Dawn's unit balancing is like you're, Path you... of Radiance. It's aside from Soph and Maklov, I think it's actually one of the better games. Um, there's other characters that are not as useful. Like, uh, I I mean, you've said in the past that you kind of like Marcy in Path of Radiance. I don't. Ah, uh, see, that's the thing though. Objectively, I think she's. Um, I think they've said she's one of the best in Path of Radiance. Really. I don't know. Yeah, but well, this is all come to um, this is all down to what units are objectively the best. Like objectively, Nephany's one of the shitty units. Well, to be fair, I mean Nephany in Path of Radiance is not not phenomenal. Mm. Like she like she's definitely like she definitely can be useful, but she requires a little bit of uh, she, yeah, she's especially kind of when a, she's kind of an S archetype, arguably. Eh, sort of. It's also a case of like you've got Oscar who's mounted comes as another launch unit and has been training for longer, so what's the point? Yeah. So yeah, uh, Lin and Raph, um, they go off together. I think they're canon as well, because they give birth to Sue. Also, just it, it makes the most sense, because Lin did mention in one of the chapters she does kind of just want to go back to the plane, so it makes sense. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, you've got Lin and Raph together, so Zerk's going to be happy. <laughs> yeah, well, Lin, gonna... I, don't, I don't know how he'll react to the um, Hector Hard Mode one, where it's Elowood and Lin, because I've never heard his opinion on that one. I just, well, know he I, hates Hollywood and I just know he hates Hector and Lynn. <laughs> yep. And I was I was uh, trolling him the other day because he tweeted about, get this shit off my timeline. It's like, ooh, somebody just gave me an idea. It's like, don't you fucking <laughs> dare. <laughs> Your Twitter posts are literally, uh, whenever Zark mentions something, you're like, okay, uh, how can I troll him this time? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's all you guys do. Uh, that's, that's because he annoys the living crap out of me with every one of his tweets. You know, it's like every time every time I see Zerka, uh, you know, tweet something, I'm like, oh boy. Most How? of the time, all he does is tweet about Lin, though. Uh, yeah. Well, 
I mean, he's tweeting about a character that I don't care about, you know, and, and like, talking about how, uh... Oh, yeah. oh, and it is Biran! It is Biran in this, in the, in the European release. It's like, why, why is it translated like that? I don't know! In, yeah. in one of the chapters, it randomly goes Italian for some point. Yeah. And, and they're missing a couple of, uh, cutscenes, cut cause, um, there's, there's like a yeah, couple Yeah, we don't of... get, we don't get the one at the end, I don't forget the one at the end of the movie Sophia or, like, um, Hector and Fing when they're older. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a weird thing, cause I remember, um, I remember that was a thing w- with, uh, you'd get, like, a, a scene where, um, where it's uh, Elwood and Hector when they're slightly older, and and it's when uh, Roy and Lelina meet for the first time, and then there's also a, a scene where uh, Zephyl's meeting with somebody. And with it's like that, yeah, that's a yeah. that's a cool thing, but it's like, why is that not here? Oh, because we got shafted <laughs> once again. All right, but yeah, we always get shafted. But anyway, I, that's, that's Blazing Sword, everyone. That's Blazing Sword. So. Um, yeah. I hope you all had a great time enjoying this. Sorry for the long delay. It's just, you know, moving and, sorry and stuff for, like that. Sorry for the fucking technical hiccups that occurred that, in this Blame part. Discord, not us. Blame Discord. Yeah. Um, exactly. I had a wonderful time let's play this game. Currently, this stands as my favorite Fire Emblem game. I think this is a fantastic game to get into Fire Emblem. If you just enjoy it, whether you're veteran or casual, will it be your favorite? I don't know. Some people say this is overrated, and I get that. But I think this is a Fire Emblem game everyone can get down with. I think it's a game I think everyone should also play, just to see for what it is and enjoy it. Yeah. It's it's definitely a game that you should you should play early on, you know, just because it's it's very easy to get into. Yeah, it, it, it this is like this is what a lot of people got a lot of people into Fire Emblem. And to this day it ha- it has a lot of nostalgia for some of the we- for a lot of the Western fans. I didn't grow up with this. I didn't play this until like much later, but it's my favorite Fire Emblem game and I hope this let's play showed you as to why. And Zane, I hope you enjoyed the ride whenever you did come on board. Yep. I'm probably not going to be back for... Uh, I'm probably not going to show up again until we do the Sacred Stones Let's Play. Um, and that'll be interesting because I've played Sacred Stones a little bit more than I have played FE7. So I, I have a little bit more to say about it. Yeah, well, uh, with the Hect Hard Mode, we're getting everyone on board. So whoever wants to come could be there for that. But Ooh. I hope you guys had a great time. As for what's next, well, like I said in the last part, I'm going back to my favorite video game franchise with Metroid Fusion. I'm really looking forward to that. So Ooh. you've all got that to look forward to. I'll be starting the Hex Hard Mode playthrough not too long now. I'll make a video announcing, you know, when it starts, how to get here on the Discord channel and all that jazz. So hope you all look forward to that. All right. So, so um, till next time, I am the King yeah. Bahamut. And I have been Blazing Light. Thank you so much for joining me, Zane. And we will see you all later. Have a fantastic night and take care. Peace out, motherfuckers. Motherfuckers.